Hello and welcome to this worship service. My name is Carmen Little and I'm a lay leader with the Chetwin Shared Ministry. It is my pleasure to be able to worship with you this Easter season. Our call to worship. We are here today because the weeping of Mary Magdalene once said, I have seen the Lord. We are here because Jesus still comes into our locked spaces and says, peace be with you, receive the Holy Spirit. We are here today like doubting Thomas who finally cried, my Lord and my God. We are here because of Jesus who asks us face to face, do you truly love me? We gather here to whisper timidly, yes, Lord, you know that we love you. We are here because many faithful disciples have listened to Jesus' words, do not be afraid, do not be afraid. Go and tell, Jesus has been raised. Our opening prayer. God, we are blind, but you open our eyes to see your glory revealed through your Son, Jesus Christ, who died and rose again to lead us into life. And God, we are deaf, but you unstop our ears to hear the power of your resurrection story. Once we were dead, but now in Christ we are alive. God, we are silent, but you set free our tongues to rejoice and sing with all the hosts of heaven. Holy, holy, holy is the one who transfigures our world with the spirit of life. Holy, holy, holy is the one who redeems and makes whole all who respond. Holy, holy, holy is the one in whose light we see that all creation will be made new. Amen. When we wake up on any Easter morning, we already know how the story of Holy Week ends. We didn't wake up wondering whether or not Jesus of Nazareth was still in the tomb. We didn't wake up to a world where death and the grave seem to have won the final victory. We already know how the story ends. However, it's important for us to remember that on that first Easter day so many years ago, the disciples of Jesus did not wake up with that same assurance. Whatever they were expecting to face that day, it is clear from the Bible that resurrection was not on their minds. We know from accounts in the Gospels of Mark and Luke that the women had come to the tomb early on the first day of the week to anoint the dead body of Jesus with spices and ointments. These women were making their way to the tomb expecting to see a dead body and not a risen Lord. The fact that they were not expecting the resurrection is proven because when they arrived at the tomb, found the stone rolled away and saw that the tomb was empty, none of them said, he is risen. Instead, the women went running back to Peter and reported to him that the body had been stolen. At that moment, Peter did not speak up and say that no one should be alarmed because Jesus had simply been raised from the dead. Rather, he and the other disciples rushed to the now empty tomb and looked inside. Even when they stood looking inside of that empty tomb, none of them spoke up and said, he is risen just as he said. The disciples simply went back into hiding, wondering who had stolen the body of Jesus. It's important that we remember on that first Easter morning, none of the followers of Jesus were expecting him to be raised from the dead. John chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Over the course of that first day, Jesus begins to reveal himself to his friends, and as he does, their spirits are transformed and their faith is renewed. Needless to say, the disciples were overjoyed. None of them were expecting the resurrection, but now all of them knew for a fact that Christ was risen from the dead. Well, almost all of them knew that Christ was risen, it seems that one of the disciples, the one named Thomas, 
was not with the others when Jesus made his miraculous and historic appearance. What a time to be absent. Jesus returns from the dead and Thomas was not there. God's victory over sin and Satan was being confirmed, but Thomas was not there. The Holy Spirit had been given to the disciples so that their ministry could have much of the same power as did the ministry of Jesus. But Thomas missed out on the Holy Spirit because Thomas was not there. John chapter 20 verses 24 through 29. But Thomas, who was also called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. <clears throat> when Thomas returned, the other disciples told him that they had seen Jesus, but Thomas did not believe them. He could tell that something had happened to them. He could see that they now possessed a joy and a hope that he still lacked. Something had obviously happened, but when they tried to tell him about the resurrection, Thomas doubted and would not believe them. He said that unless he could see Jesus with his own eyes and touch the nail prints with his own hands, that he would not believe what they were seeing. As a result of this lack of belief, Thomas has forever been known as Doubting Thomas. However, I want to suggest today that we watch Thomas as he moves from doubt to belief. It might be well for us to consider that Thomas had a reason to doubt what the other disciples were telling him. After all, except for the people that Jesus had raised from the dead himself, who ever heard of people being raised from the dead? This was not a normal occurrence. It did not happen every day. I'm sure that Thomas believed in life after death in heaven in some unknown spiritual form. Many Jews had believed that for hundreds of years. But that was not the message that Thomas was given. Thomas was told that Jesus had just been standing in that room on that day, and that was apparently more than Thomas could comprehend. None of the other disciples believed that Jesus had been raised from the dead until they saw him with their own eyes. So why do we criticize Thomas? Because he wanted that same experience. Is it because we take the biblical story for granted? Is it because we're no longer listening to what it says about what God was doing? And maybe the reason why Thomas did not believe what he was hearing was because he didn't trust those persons who were speaking. I can imagine that Thomas looked over at Peter and said, Why should I believe anything that you have to say about Jesus? The last time his name came up, you were the one who said that you did not even know who he was. You weren't telling the truth then, so how do I know that you're telling the truth now? He could have looked around the room and said something similar to all of the other disciples. All of them had deserted Jesus. None of them stood by his side at that critical hour. Maybe Thomas did not believe what they said because he had no confidence in their integrity. Whatever the reason was for Thomas's doubt, he got what he wanted just one week later. The Bible says that Jesus showed up again in the room where the disciples were gathered together. This time he speaks directly to Thomas and tells him to come and place his fingers in the wounds on his body. There's one more thing he said from this text. Jesus said to Thomas, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Thomas joined the other disciples in believing in the resurrection of Jesus as a result of physically seeing him and touching him and hearing his voice after he was raised from the dead. They were there when Christ preached on the mountainsides of Galilee. They were there when Jesus healed as he traveled the roads of Judea. 
They were there in that upper room when Jesus ate with them and instituted the Lord's Supper. They were there also in that same upper room when Jesus appeared to them in the hours and days following his resurrection from the dead. It was easier for them to believe because they were able to see the whole thing unfold before their very eyes. The real issue surrounding Easter is not what Thomas did or did not believe. The real issue is whether or not you and I believe this same story. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Do you believe that he lived on this earth as an extension of the very presence of God himself? Do you believe that when he died on that cross that all of your sins were forgiven? If you just put your faith in him? Do you believe that when God raised him from the dead that he also swung open the gates of the grave and gave the promise of eternal life to all that call upon the name of Jesus? The blessing is not to those who lived with and walked with Jesus and who saw everything recorded in the Bible. The blessing really belongs to those who cannot prove it, but who do not doubt it. The blessing belongs to those who never saw it, and yet they are willing to stake their lives and their souls on it. The blessing belongs to you and to me and to anyone else who stands nearly 2,000 years removed from Calvary and who continues to proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. What is your declaration of the resurrection of Jesus from the dead? I hope that you are prepared to declare that Christ is Lord. I hope you are prepared to declare that because of him your sins are forgiven. I hope you are prepared to say that you will walk by faith and not by sight. Claim Christ today even though there is much that you do not know and understand and may never fully understand. Claim Christ today as the way, the truth, and the life. Claim Christ today even though everything in your present world is not as you may wish it to be. Claim Christ today and allow him to reorder your every step. Say what Thomas said after he saw and touched Jesus, my Savior and my Lord. Only your blessing will be greater than his because you did not see what Thomas saw and yet you believe. Today I stand with Thomas who made his move from doubt to belief. One week he said that he would not believe that Christ was risen unless he could see it for himself. One week later, after Christ made a personal appearance just for Thomas, that doubting disciple could be heard making this declaration, my Lord and my God. When we struggle with believing with our faith, we can often forget that God instructs us in how to believe in him. And he teaches us that real faith comes from hearing the word of Christ. This doesn't mean that all who hear will believe. Many heard Jesus' words and still rejected him. But this is how the Holy Spirit brings people to faith and maintains our faith, not by seeing Christ, but by hearing the word of Christ. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And now let us, God's people, pray. O Christ risen, on this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. In the midst of the darkness and fear in this world, let us revel in the divine light of your glorious resurrection. Alleluia, Christ is risen. O oh, Christ risen, lavish your healing grace and hope upon all who are ailing in body, mind, or spirit, and all who give them daily care. O oh, Christ risen, our grateful hearts commend those we love who have risen with you into the heavenly peace and splendor of life everlasting. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Holy Redeemer Christ, resurrected in glory, in dying you destroyed our mortal death, in rising you claimed salvation for our souls, Release us from temporal distractions that entomb us in this earthly life and set us again on the path to our true and eternal life in you. We ask through the Holy Spirit, the divine breath of new life, and our merciful and partial creator, who together with you are one God in glory, boundless and everlasting. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.